Philosophy and also the uh, conference organizer and scientific committee. Besides these, I also devoted to the youth education, the 4-H, and also the University of Tennessee Forestry Club. Besides these, I also uh, I'm also in responsible to um, the teaching courses in University of Tennessee. I have taught several quantitative and geospatial courses in both Virginia Tech and University of Tennessee. And also I provide a statistical consulting service in the university. I serve on these um, college uh, commu uh, committees for statistical consulting. Besides this, I mentor in several graduate students and gra undergraduate students. And also I am on a different committees and serve on the student advisors. I also devoted into the experiential learning, diverse learning and digital learning to develop different tools for students have different background in learning forestry, especially for measurements and for biometrics. And besides this, I also have some experience in industry. I did an internship in one of the big uh, forest consulting firms in the South and US. I work with the forest management and harvest planning group to develop different quantitative tools to help them to assess different clients' need. And I just provide you some example, example here, like I develop a thinning tool so the client can use this thinning tool to evaluate when to thin and how much should be cut. And besides this, I want to share with you some of the tree species I have been working with uh, in different projects, including the Japanese cedar and Chinese fir. Uh, those are the plantations, um, major plantations in Taiwan. I have been working on these two species for a while. And in the southern US, there's uh, also a major species, a uh, planted space species called Lablai pine. I have also working on these previously for a while as well. And when I started at Tennessee, I uh, started working on mixed hardwood forests. There are a lot of hardwood states, so I started working on this project. And start last year, I started a Caribbean project, which is focused on the tropical trees. So those are the tree species I have been working on before. So a brief introduction of myself. Then the next step I would like to share with you is for today's topic is what is forest biometrics, especially what's the role of forest biometricians in in forest management and in forestry. So before I go into the detail about what the forest biometric is, I would like to step back a bit to talk about what is forest management. So in forest management, no matter we want to manage the forest for timber production or want to uh, manage for carbon, or even we want to protect these uh, forests for the wildlife habitats. All we really want to know is to accurately assess the stocking and value of our target population. We want to know how many trees were there, how they grow, what the health, and then what is the value of this population. So to talk about the stocking, we can know, we want to know what's the total volume or biomass or even the carbon in these forests. We want to know also the size distribution, what is the forest structure? Are there a lot of big trees or there are a lot of small trees or they are mix of different sizes? We also want to know the species composition. Is that a single species or a mixed species or how many species were there? Those are uh, closely related to the stocking. And as I mentioned, we also want to know the value. Um, the most dreadful value is the timber price in the market. What is the, the value of all the trees? And even for carbon, we sell the carbon nowadays. So also have the price for the different tree species. But if we want to know these two components about our population. We need to collect the data from the trees, from our populations. So that brings in the, the question here. How and what to collect? 
how we can ensure we collect a high quality of data on schedule and under budget. Because we are now going to spend a lot of time and money to collect data in the field. We want to make sure we have the accurate data, but at the same time, we are under the time limit and our budget. So here brings a, a following questions we have. For example, should all trees in the population be measured? Or we can just do a small portion of them. If we have a thousand trees in the population, should we measure a thousand of them? Or we can measure like 10%, a hundred of them, or even less. How many trees should we measure in the field? We need to determine that numbers. And also, what measurement should be taken from trees? Should we measure the diameter of trees? Should we measure the height as well? Or the crown lengths, crown widths? What how about the environment? Do we need to take any soil sample or measure the temperature? Or what are kind of um, variables we should be uh, consider when we uh, con take a measurement from trees? And besides, what kind of tools and techniques can be used? Should we use a tape or we use a laser or we use a different kind of tools to measure trees? It also depends on the population we are targeting. Lastly, how to process the data? Can we use a model instead to um, provide a more efficient way? If we collect 100 trees, how we can use this data to interpret the entire population? So those are the questions we need to answer when we think we need to collect a good quality of data. Those are really important components in this topic. And besides this, we also now really want to know the current con conclusion, uh, condition of the population. We also want to know what about the future stocking and value. Should we collect new data? Should we use a model? So that brings another question that, for example, how to predict the tree growth and forest change based on the current condition of our data? Can we use the current data to make a prediction accurately, or we need to collect a new data set? So what kind of models should we build? Are, are they good? Are they accurate? Can they um, provide an accurate prediction for the future condition? Or how, how do we choose those models? And also, as I mentioned, should we use a new data set to build the models, or we can still use the old data set? Should we collect new data in the future or we just use the old data set? That's another questions we will have when we want to know the future condition of our population. And also how to incorporate data from different sources. For example, we have the data from the past 10 years. Um, can we use that information as well? Or we need to separate out how to quantify the uncertainty of different data set. It's another important question when we want to know the future condition, stuck in value of our population. So as a forest for biometric, uh, biometrician, there are three different components we are really interested in. The first one is the sample. The second one is the model. Final one is the system. Let me um, talk each of these briefly. As I've just mentioned, we want to collect the data from the population. So how we collect the representative data from trees? As I mentioned, how, how trees do we need? What kind of tools do we need to use? And then if we want to use a model, how real a reliable models based on our data set? That's the second component of forest biometrician we are curious about. And the final, we want to create an effective and efficient system based on the sample and models so that when we have a data set or different model, we can compare into a system. <clears throat> Pardon. Then, then we can use these three components to provide the quantitative information so that used for force management decision making. So what is force biometrics? To me, forest biometry is a simple equation, is a statistics, is a forestry, 
and it's a combination of these two. So to me, the force biometrics is a statistics plus force three, then equal to force biometrics. Specifically, in statistics, we're curious about sampling theory because we want to know how to design our inventory, how to design our sampling design to collect the representative sample. And we are going to use the models to make prediction of the growth and yield in the future. And even the current condition, we can rely on some models. So regression analysis become really important in force well metrics because we want to figure out the relationship between different variables and use those variables to make prediction. Of course, um, nowadays, computer skills are really important in statistics because we have a big data set. So those software can help us to make a quick calculation rely on software. So computer skills are also really important in force biometrics nowadays. <clears throat> Another important component in force, uh, in force biometrics is forestry. Um, most of force biometricians has the background in forestry. So they learn dendrology, they know forest ecology, they know civil culture. With those background, we can have a better ideas about our model prediction, is that accurate or not? Is that make sense or not? So with that information, plus the statistical techniques, like force biometrics. And in the recent de decades, we have developed a lot of different new technology and techniques, which can be used in force biometrics. So back to these three components, for the sample, we have remote sensing and GIS, like LiDAR or UAV, different drone technology can be used to measure trees from different scale. So in addition to go into the population to measure trees, we can rely on different techniques to help us to collect the samples and then to reduce some costs. So that's the one of the major advances in forest biometrics nowadays is to rely on some remote sensing sensors and for use that to accomplish some of the difficult tasks in force management. And the secondary, when we talk about models, we also have a new technology in model, like machine learning or AI techniques can be used to deal with a big data set or data from different sources. And in addition to the traditional regression analysis, we have new tools in our toolbox can be used to build the models. And the third components, we now have a lot of open source software, have a different databases, all are publicly available. So how we can incorporate those free um, sources into our systems to make the, the accuracy and efficiency to provide quantitative information is also a trend in forest biometrics in the recent decades. So that's an overview of what a forest biometric is. And then I would like to talk about how to become a forest biometrician and what skill set you need. But before I talk about that, I would like to share with you some of my experience why I choose uh, force biometrics uh, as my career. First of all, I'm the math and tree lover. As in college, nobody taught force biometric or force measurements. So when I look for the graduate study, I would really want to see if there's a field can combine the math and trees in together. And I found force biometrics is the answer which combines statistics and forestry. One of the reasons why I choose forest biometrics. And another reason I choose forest biometrics because it involves a mixture of outdoor and indoor work. As forest biometrician, we need to go outside to measure trees. But at the same time, we spend a lot of time indoor to process the data and to build the models. So I really like this combination where I can go outside as well and go stay inside to work on some of the project. So that's why I choose force biometrics as my career. 
And then I would like to talk about some graduate studies. I'm particularly focused on the master's degree and a PhD degree. So when you are a forest biometric student, what you will be uh, expected to accomplish in during your graduate study. First one, as I mentioned, is a combination of forestry and statistics. So forestry is also a really important component in forest biometrics. So background in forestry really help uh, to become a successful forest biometrician and also build a strong foundation in statistics. Many universities in the US now offer some dual degree program. So you can do a mass, um, master in statistics as well as a PhD in forest biometrics at the same time. So building a strong foundation in statistics is really important. And also be proficient in at least one programming language. Nowadays, people use R or Python a lot, and a lot of different programming languages are there. But as a forest biometrician, you need to be proficient at least one programming language. And also understanding of GIS and remote sensing. As I mentioned in the recent decades, this uh, technique has already been applied dif in different projects, different topics in forest biometrics. So have these GIS and remote sensing really important. And I would like to briefly talk about the career. So if you are a forest biometrician, what you can do. First of all, I would like to talk about your career in academia. So <clears throat> at least in the <clears throat> pardon, in the US, they are as long as the university has the forestry background, uh, uh um forestry program, they will have the forest measurement or forest biometric as one of the core courses in the program. So forest biometric always um teach these force measurement or force biometrics in the program. And also usually provide statistical consulting service in the program because it will be a quantitative guy in, in the program. And then people will ask you some question about statistics. And in industry, force biometrician will be helped to predict the force growth and yield, which is one of the main tasks in the force consulting firms. And besides that, you will work with other groups to provide quantitative information for the clients. And then finally, I would like to share with you uh, my projects. And I will not go into the detail about each project, but I want to um, give you some ideas about what force biometrician is and based on what I have introduced. So the first project I've been working on is the stain carrying capacity and dynamic. In this project, we really want to know is what is the maximum population size for a given species or for a given region. If we know the maximum size, population size of a species or a population, then we can manage, we can start to design our management strategies to either approach the maximums or do whatever we need. So the first Topic I work under this project is to look at the loblaw pine plantation across the southeast US. We look at different regions and also look at different planting density and see what's the maximum population size for these species under different environmental conditions. And when I started at University of Tennessee. I, as I mentioned, I shifted my focus to mixed hardwood forest. So another topic in under this project is to look at the different um, carrying capacities under different physiographic regions. We look at from the very north, the US to the south. So we can compare different forest types and different regions, what's the maximum population size. And another project I've been working on is the stem taper modeling and the bark thickness. This is really important because we want to accurately estimate the tree volume. And especially bark thickness is really an important indicator for the fire damage of a tree. So we want to estimate the profile of the tree stem. So I try different modeling approaches and then different techniques to 
to help provide some quantitative information about stem taper and bark thickness. And carbon is really a hot topic in, in the field right now. So University of Tennessee collaborate with Nature Conservancy to sell the carbon of the three different properties in, of um, the university had. And then I'm, I'm be part of this um, climate small forestry program. I as a forest biometrician, I developed different modeling technique to look at the um, size structure of our forest in estimate the carbon. So here is another project I have been working on. And then as I mentioned, I started last year, I focused on the Caribbean trees. Uh, well, I have started this project to look at, to model different allometric relationship, different growth um, pattern for Caribbean trees. And I also have the presentation from a few months ago. If you are in, feel free to check out the project I've been working on. I think that's it. Uh, so thank for your patience and join this meeting. I'm start to taking any questions. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email address is here. Thank you. Wow, wow. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shenga Yang, for this uh, very beautiful section, uh, exposing us to what forest biometrics entail. And I'm sure right now, everyone on this platform, uh, they are glad. I can see a comment on the chat room saying thank you for this section. So on behalf of everybody, we are also saying thank you. So let's take some questions before we before the professor take his leave. Please, if you have uh, any question, like the professor gives us the permission that you can unmute yourself and ask the question if you have, yeah, if you are that bold enough, and you can as well use the comment section. So this is from Anand Kumar is say, saying, wonderful presentation. I am working in similar field. Do you have any article? So don't worry. Uh, the, the email is there on the screen for you to reach out to the professor at uh, any time. But if you have a question, can you drop it at the comment section? Okay, Professor, while we are waiting for a question from the comment section on our participants, I want to ask a question uh, like on a general note yeah. on behalf of many of the participants that are here who are willing to pursue a career in the field of biometrics. You know, mm -hmm. um, the first Okay, as an undergraduate, I think there is a question on the chat room. As an undergraduate, uh, as an undergraduate forest forestry student working passionately to specialize in forest biometric, how can I how can I get a mentorship? So this is a question this person is asking. So do you mean how to contact the professors or? I think now let me let me direct, let me answer this question to save our time and move to the next question. I think what he's saying is that how the we he get some kind of direct mentorship or oh, mm -hmm. what uh, biometric is all about. And uh, in that case, this is exactly what this mentorship program is all about. So maybe in the next uh, edition, we may mm -hmm. bring, uh Professor Cheng Anyang back again to tell us like some practicalities about forest biometrics. This is what this mentorship program stands for. I know I reached out to uh, Professor Times Jin, who happens to be a mentor of mine, and a lot of forest biometricians, and they are happy and willing to contribute to this particular project. So this is just an introduction. We will still have a time where we would introduce students to the use of R and how this can be applied uh, in forestry. So let me go to the next question, Professor, because of our time. Sure. Yeah. The question of course. on the group on the chat room is from Anand Kuma. He's saying if I want to calculate carbon sequestration potential of a bank green species of daily India. So how how is it going to go about this to calculate the carbon sequestration potential? Well, this is a really good question and really a, a big topic actually. So um, I'm not quite sure if you really, you just want to target a carbon species and that, I will suggest you to go to any like urban forestry journals to look at how they quantify the carbon because they, 
the the urban situation is quite different than the the forest. The so I will suggest you to go to Urban Forestry Journal to look at some articles. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, contribution. So this is one of the advantage again that we have. Uh, I can see a question on the chat room asking a question that uh, he or she wants to know if you are accepting very students. So this is much more personal, but uh, I leave th this for you to provide an answer, Professor. Cool. Yeah, the question is saying, he or she wants to know if you are if you are currently accepting graduate students. Yeah, I'm still looking for graduate students, a, a master or PhD. Okay, interesting. So mm -hmm. this is a, this is a good news for us many that are here today. So like, um, it is my it is our intention at this organization to ensure that at least we have a number of people who also gain some uh, form of uh, scholarship opportunities from this mentorship program. So the professor is still currently accepting students. And I, I remember you shared with me the other time and I reached out to a lot of people about this. So uh, back to my question, professor. No, what, for that one question is we, we are still requiring GRE exam. Okay. So on... Um, that's I know that's one main challenge to recruit students from um, different countries because GRE exam is is still required, unfortunately. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So uh, I'm sure many of us knows uh, what GRE is all about. So this uh, particular this are requirement, and this is one of the things Professor Bianca S. Kessin will be addressing tomorrow as we got requirements for you to. Uh, gain some uh, form of uh, graduate opportunities in America and Canada, what are the things you need to uh, document and needs to have? So this will be raised tomorrow by Professor Bianca is guessing. So, so to my question, uh, from my experience mm -hmm. about forest biometrics, one of the definitions that sticks to my head over the years is that forest biometrics is an aspect of forestry that is synonymous to biological statistics. So one thing that has been on my head all through the years is statistics. And you have just done justice to <laughs> today by saying forest biometrics based on your own balance it the combination of statistics and forestry. And you have made us understand that to really make uh, this big wave in the field of bio, forest biometrics, one needs to have this strong knowledge in statistics. Now, what do you tell people who are passionate about biometrics, but do not have mm -hmm. much knowledge in statistics. What kind of advice will you give them? I will suggest you to start take if you are still in college. I will start. I will suggest you start taking some courses in. I mean, not if you don't have any opportunity in statistics department, you can start looking for some quantitative courses in your program or in the college and then start to get familiar with those numbers and those terminology. So that would be helpful if you don't have any strong background in statistics in college. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Yes, it does. It does. Again. And also, as I mentioned, there, nowadays there are a lot of YouTube videos or those um open sources resources you can use to learn statistics so even you are not in the school you can still learn those um to get those materials and learn those knowledge there hmm. interesting that was that was uh that really answers the question i was about to ask as we got you know statistics. yeah because as i like uh, as i am um, looking for a lot of applications for forest biometrics. Uh, honestly, one of the main components is to see if these students have the potential mm. in quantitative analysis, because that's all the forest biometrics about. You need to be comfortable using the software, those techniques in addressing the forestry problem. So, be comfortable with the numbers and the statistic concept really important 
to be successful in this field. Mm, interesting. But assumption forestry is also important. So if you don't have any background in forestry, that will not be okay. Mm. So in addition to statistics, you really need also have the background in forestry. Okay. At least the fundamental understanding of some forestry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, uh, to the final question I have before I, I go to what we have on the chat room, you know, now we have, like you said, we have a lot of video recordings on uh, YouTube. Yeah as regard how one can learn uh, most of these open source programs. Now, do, I want us to place it in the right perspective. Having the knowledge about uh, the usage of open source uh, softwares like R, Python, et cetera, uh, how do we bring this into the theoretical understanding, application, applied knowledge? You know, it is a different thing to know how to run the codes, but it is another thing to explain the result of the codes. So how how do we bring uh, these two together in the field of biometrics? That's a really good question. So when I um show student R or the software, I will ask them questions first. Like in my presentation, it really starts from the questions, why you want to do this and that, and before you start working in coding, because to code something up, in my opinion, is easier than to come up with the questions. Mm. So I think it's really important to know why you do this and what like what kind of output you can be used based on your code then before you start coding them. So to me, I think it's more important to understand what you need and what kind of tools you can use and before you start using them. Mm. Mm. So that's that's the, my personal opinions on these. And of course, when you after you take some statistics courses or get more experience in statistical analysis, you'll get more and more ideas about how to interpret them, the results based on the output from software. Mm. And I really think to share the like to try to explain some of the results to other people can also be helpful to help, at least for me to organize my language and how to put an easy way for people to understand your result. Mm. So that's that's another, the, the another way I will do to help me to interpret the results in an easy and simple way. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Also attending some conferences so to meet professionals is really helpful too. To hear what people say, how they interpret this and that. Also helpful. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. So we take the last question for today, and that is from Sarah. Okay. We, 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 no, we have just one more question from Saraj Kandel. I don't know, maybe he's connecting from India. So is okay. that is asking which equation can I use if I don't have allometric equation for a given species for biomass estimation in a tropical forest of Nepal? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know if you have the data or not. And at least for Caribbean, before they use um, one general equation for all the species. So that's why we, we start working on the biomass. And I believe there are some like publish equation here and there. So you can probably use those equations to test your species as well or find the, the species in similar family or genus or functional type and see if that can be, be useful. Okay. So and also for another one about certification in statistics. Yeah, that counts some of your background in statistics, but like me, myself, during the interview, I will also ask some of these questions, some basics. And so, yeah, I hope that answers your questions. Yes, it does. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Professor, we want to say a big thank you to you on behalf of uh, uh, the entire 
team and members of the Achievers Gathering uh, all over the world, and as well on behalf of the participants. We thank you for taking out time to join us today, and uh, we look forward to bringing you. Yeah, really appreciate this opportunity. If you have any question, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any question you have. But um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much, Professor. So right about now, we will stop the live streaming and as well as the recording. And we will uh, leave the room for uh, Mr. Blessing Oladoja to tell us much about uh, the organization, what the organization is all about for participants that are new and do not really know much about uh, the organization and how they can be a part of what we do here in TAG-NG. Thank you very much.